they feels like it's been said. Oh. So am I forward enough? I think you need to come a little bit more forward. What? People are seeing this. People are seeing this. We live. Okay, that is the best There you go. There we go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> there are people. I don't know. Hi, it's Gabri Hello, Mukenstrom. That's my friend from Vienna. Her name is Gabby, and she's so excited to be here. Hi, Gabs. <laughs> okay, we have some other people in the room. Um, Say hi to us, guys. If you can hear gaps, if the sound is good, can you please just give me a thumbs up? You know, I'm pedantic about the sound. <laughs> and then we'll start in the next two minutes. Just give everybody a chance to join. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. That's good. Okay. I'm excited. Very excited. You know? I'm getting <laughs> My first time on TV. On TV, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on the net. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, so I have this little channel. Um, it's called Cindy with a Y. What? Yeah. I thought you were just having, we're just having coffee today. So. <laughs> no, we're not just having coffee, Eugene. This little channel is not just about, I don't want it just to be about like picture perfect Instagram style life um, where we pretty that everything's perfect in our lives. I wanted to be about real talk. And I really wanted to be about talking about things that matter and make an impact. And so tonight we're live, but I know that a lot of people watch this video on a replay. And um, I've had a lot of reviews previously from others that um, where they come back and they leave comments or they will look at the content that we that we create mm -hmm. on a live video but they will always share and say you know it was really inspirational or they like what we're doing or whatever so eugene is here eugene um and i worked together a very long time ago how many years i don't know Ill, but it, <laughs> i don't was... keep the record of things <laughs> just like when i left that uh phone was like <laughs> yeah bye yeah, losers. peace out <laughs> peace out losers I'm still the loser that's there, so no, I don't know. No. I don't know. Just other losers. <laughs> the other ones. Fine, yeah. Okay, so we worked together a very long time ago. We sort of kept in contact. Um, and now we've recently just, I've been following Eugene in terms of his, yeah, the, the way his life has gone. Um, we, we just spoke about um, he had a blog and we spoke about his journey with autism. Right? Yeah, it's, it, that was more for me, just uh, it became a, a public diary. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it was um, more of a therapeutic okay. activity for me. And I uh, haven't updated in a while, I okay. guess, and, but um, it's something I would generally like, encourage people to do. Mm. Um, just write, put down what you're thinking are you feeling yeah. and stuff i've always had a good time going back to it mm. reading my own sort of entries and being like okay mm. either uh, getting a better picture of um where i was at yeah and it's a nice subject to see you know where you're at where you are now yeah. mm. and i think it's like it's like therapy because like okay the, the, yeah. there are people that are seeing it but i mean you you, you journaling exactly what you're feeling and and i think sometimes that's the same with with my vlogs when i'm sharing real talk um i'm sharing pizza pieces of my life pizza. yeah pizza <laughs> pieces of my life um that other people won't necessarily um would have known if i didn't share it on camera mm -hmm. but you you did that with your with your blog okay so before we go any further um let's tell the world who is eugene vix Tell us about yourself. The, the other, nobody in the sea of nobodies, I guess. <laughs> um, because I was thinking about this question. Mm. You sent them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would only always say that I am someone trying. I am a traveler mm. in life, I guess. Um, well, until the end 
end, you know, mm. whatever that might be. But um, I just never sought to give myself much credit with anything. I never felt like the standout person and all that. So mm. I had a lot of stuff to get through all the time, but, um, you know, pretty easy going, I guess. I mm. used to be the weird child growing up. Um, I joke often, I say I was weird before weird was cool. <laughs> um, when it was just weird and like you get pointed at and mm. this and that, but um, I'd say that. Um, maybe a bit quirky. Mm. Uh, my best, you know. Um, <laughs> but somebody with a lot of interest, um, interested in everything. Okay. I guess I do a lot of self study and um, listen to lectures and watch this, that, and the other. Uh, for the moment, just trying to be not what 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 is the language parameters here? Yeah, I don't know. Not <laughs> bad to my fellow man. I feel like it's, okay. it's uh, that use your words, me. whatever. Word. I told you there is no swearing uh, <laughs> really? restrictions here, but yeah, yeah. let's limit them to um, a, to a few. Yeah, but like uh, trying to be good to people. Yeah. That's sort of what I'm doing right now. You know, try and be my best me and mm. try and be good to the people around me. But, you know, interested in a couple of things. Okay. Um, I've, yeah, I'm just in a lot of stuff. Um, okay. I, I feel like it's a lot to narrow down. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. That's the one thing that I remember about you. And, and and why I think that we always got along was because you're quirky and because you're an artist. And I like I like that about I love artists because I'm a dancer and I'm an artist myself in a in a different way. But I get that. And I like off center like people that are off center and not just the normal um cookie cut um type. Um yeah. Like I mean in dancing, Gabs, you will you will know this. In in in, in the dance industry, there's there's people of yeah, there's characters, um, I'm telling you, like so so. I get that, and it, I think it reminds me of the type of, of artists and characters that I've seen in the dance industry. Um, but I just like people that are funny and that are interested in different stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's about it. I funny, get that. Funny and interested in different stuff. So yeah, you, yeah. You could have answered that one. Yeah. Oh, oh, just the bow tie. I had a poll uh, yesterday as to what I should wear. Mm -hmm. um, and full drag one as the option but you know <laughs> i feel like the people who uh who chose that just don't know what goes into full drag so both are was second place okay and that's what you're so you went with that yeah. okay cool the life okay <laughs> we need to tell the people where to find you afterwards because mm -hmm. you'll be on social media obviously so Me? yeah yeah <laughs> you are <laughs> okay so eugene we're gonna cut into the serious stuff um your son is autistic, mm -hmm. um, and that being a mom, being a parent, that is is difficult on its own. But having to deal with autism um, while you're raising a teenage daughter, how how did you deal with that, and how are you dealing with it? It's not something that obviously just goes away. Um, how's your journey been with autism and and raise being a single dad? I always say that when it comes to um, my own life and stuff, um, that I'm no different to any other parent, maybe mm. just a little bit more tired. That's, I feel like that's basically the bottom line. Mm. Um, <laughs> Violet Mendes says, sexy in the bow tie too. Thank you, Violet. I love you to the max. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, like, just to uh, give the detail of my family dynamic, it's Luke and I at home mm -hmm. together. Um, my daughter uh, lives with her, uh, with her mother's parents. Okay. Um, so, the practice day is mostly remote parenting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we're talking every day. Okay. Which is, Great. I've always tried to um, keep that dialogue mm -hmm. going with her. Uh, um, 
since like forever, mm. but, you know, doing the best that you can. Yeah. Um, you know, like the next guy, but uh, you know, she's the she's bigger <laughs> concern <laughs> for me than than her brother is. He's like he's so straightforward, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, I feel like a young person's life these days is it's just. There's no comparison. Mm. I, I can't like you know relate yeah. in, in in the same way. You know, uh, because life is so different now from yeah. when I was growing up. Um, as far as Luke goes, um, when we found out about his uh, diagnosis, mm. he was two and a half. He's ten now. Uh, his mom and I were like, "Oh, okay, cool, fantastic." We weren't super clued up about it, but mm. you know, we made that our, our job to get more information and educate ourselves and yada yada. And we started this early intervention like shortly after the diagnosis. Mm. Um, there was no skip steps. We did whatever we could within our means. Mm. And uh, he's doing really well. Mm. Um, there's um, an article I read way back then, mm. you know, with this lady who's celebrating that a 12-year-old tied his shoelaces for the first time. And wow. I remember that so vividly because I was like, that's not so great. Right? I mean, he's 12, mm. you know, even if he is on the spectrum and all that. But it teaches you to celebrate everything, mm. everything. Um, I've got a calendar that marks the first day that he, the first time he put on his own pants. You know? Wow. Um, things like that. The first time he pulled the blanket over himself as mm. well, he would just normally lay down because um, he doesn't experience cold and pain the way mm. that um, you know uh, uh, the rest of us do. Mm. So it's been that. It's been loads of gratitude. Mm. Um, it's been a lot of learning. Yeah. Um, it's been difficult times. Mm. It's difficult times. It's been a rough week. I haven't slept a lot. Um, you've got, you know, you have got people that are, uh, you know, taking Ritalin to study and cram and all mm. this stuff. And I've been taking it so that I can be functional. Sure. Uh, so it's been that, that sort of week. And this mm. happens. And there are dips and there are good days. And it's just sort of a matter of kind of sticking out the lower times, you know, mm. because wherever things get tough with him, he always redeems himself because he's got this really good um, sense of humor and he's especially loving and mm. loves to cuddle, he loves to initiate play, which is um, uh, not common uh, mm. for kids on the spectrum. Sure. Um, Make sure he gets your attention when he talks to you and, mm. you know, um, loves to sing. Mm. Like, I love that. I, so, like I feel that, that as, a, <laughs> as a parent, like, yeah, like, there's a lot of things that we take for granted. It's sorry to, to, to break your word there. But it's like, yeah, there's a lot that that we take for granted just tying your shoelace um, or covering your, your, I mean, yeah, covering yourself. Um, yeah. But you're right, everything is a celebration and it should be celebrated and not taken for granted because, um, yeah. Look, it's not to, to celebrate. There's also, you know, the dynamic is very different for us as well. Mm. Like I've been changing in, uh, changing nappies for 10 years straight now because wow. we're still, he's just taking the easy route mm. <laughs> as far as. As far as um, <laughs> using the bathroom and stuff, so uh, that's still that's still there. Um, it's a big strapping boy, and at the same time, he's still a baby mm. um, in certain aspects. So you've got all these sort of layers mm. um, that are you know there are stark differences mm. uh, between them. So he'll be super sharp on any electronics and his tablet and navigating it and for child who's still considered non-verbal mm. uh, doesn't read or if he can't read um, he finds his way around mm. so efficiently so effectively it's just it's just like sort of magic to see wow. 
and then you know the easy route that he takes as well the lazy route mm. um, and you can't blame him because mm. you know efficiency is a thing for him <laughs> so, um, why not be efficient in that yeah, field either that's the root of least <laughs> resistance okay. uh, with many things and Communicating with him is always the biggest challenge. You have mm. to listen, be listening all the time, mm. kind of figure out what he means with different sounds and all that Yeah, So always being switched on is a big part of it. Mm. So, so always listening, always trying to think, mm. what could it be? What did he listen to today? Mm. We could have adopted either a word or a sound. Yeah. And, you know. So no matter how tired you are, you still have to be tuned in to know exactly what Luke is trying to communicate to you. As much as I can. Mm. Mm. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> wow. Guys, wow. Um, okay. So I'm just looking at your nail polish. Tell us a little bit about the, the look. Um, it's black. It's black. I love art this man. Like how, how cool is this, guys? Violet is obviously your girlfriend, right? right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting him on the spot here. Um, okay. so, so Eugene has a secret or, or this code language that he uses. And if you follow him on Instagram, you'll see like, I, I still try to figure it out, like chocolate cosmos yeah. or um, yeah, I, I'm always trying to figure things out with what is going on, but I think this quirky vibes, it's it's totally cool. Yeah, the nails have just always been something that I've wanted to do. Okay. And then you keep saying artist. I've never sort of considered myself one. I, I feel like I'm just somebody who can do the things that I do. Mm. I feel like when you're an artist, or in my opinion, is somebody who's creating and uh, saying something okay. with, with what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, say like, whether it's visual art or that's dance or whatever it's conveying mm. something and I don't feel like I fall into that parameter like I I uh, used to sort of draw growing up mm. um, just normal doodling school books and pages and all of that and nothing like what I do now um, like for the last three years so. yeah and again it's sort of just an exercise for me to see what I can do mm. and so things have developed and and I made this decision to leave corporate. Jeez. <laughs> One of the brave people that live corporate life for, to follow a passion of yours. And, and I think that's why I'm calling you an artist is because I know that you sketched um, and you do sketch. Um, and, and then you moved on into the, mm. the tattoo world. Like that's like a different form of art on, on a different level. Yeah, a little bit. Um, for me, it was just like sort of a change of mediums, mm. like saying, um, I know a lot of people make a big deal out of it, but mm. it was a completely different experience for me, mm. where, you know, uh, people make this big deal out of making the transition to tattoo art. Mm. And, you know, when I look at it now, and even before I started, it's like, you know, it's like swapping a pencil for a crayon, so swapping a crayon for a paintbrush. And the sort of, uh, I want to say, skill set or awareness mm. or uh, ability stays. Mm. You know, all that's the same. Your medium is changing and you sort of have to adapt mm. to that. So skin is just, skin could be better. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so there's a lot of variables in terms of... Um, making that leap and trying to get that same image, but what you're working on is mm. just so, mm. so not paper. <laughs> <laughs> you can't move the page. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like, it's like. Move the link or move the arm. Okay, so I wanna to touch on um, just a little bit on, so you lost your wife, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, that obviously was something that you weren't expecting in your in your in your life, um, and you are now a single dad. I mean, I got divorced by choice. Um, I'm a single mom, not yeah, dude. Uh, 
So that that was that was my choice. But like this happened to you. You didn't decide um, to, to to do this. You you never envisioned this um, to happen. So uh, talk, talk me through the, that whole process and and that part of your journey. How did you cope with that? Um, yeah, that was sudden. Um, like, you know, there's a lot that had happened in my relationship and since and all that stuff. And uh, we had this 20 year uh, uh, period where we knew each other. Mm. And, you know, married life wasn't sunshine and roses, you know, I had my issues, mm -hmm. I wasn't a great partner, I wasn't uh, the good husband that I could have been. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there was always us, mm -hmm. you know, that was my, you know, that was just like this, she was just this permanent fixture. Mm -hmm. And, um, sure. uh, Yes, I got the call from my mother. She uh, gave me the news. She was in our office on campus. She was studying full time. Mm. And went through and, you know, to discover uh, not okay. You know, I'd gotten so used to getting calls um, because she had, uh, she had health issues. Okay. Uh, so I got so used to getting calls. Mm. I don't know if she's not okay or she's in hospital or whatever, and I'd always arrive and she'd be there mm. or being treated. Or, and um, this time was different and just everything stopped. And uh, I actually asked uh, Narusha. Shortly after it happened, and I said, you know, how did you get over mm. your last loss of husband? And she said, she didn't. And um, so I discovered the same, you know, it's, you know, life hands you that. Mm. And it's like, hold this. Yeah. And that's it. You know, you and it need, leaves you, you. Yeah, you need yeah. to just, it's a thing and it's a part of every day. Yeah. Um, and but it happened. Oh. Um, and the best advice that I got, well, two pieces of advice is, uh, you know, from a counselor is, you know, deal with the loss, don't look for closure or whatever, just deal with this person being gone or being gone. And uh, then there was a, a cousin that messaged me and told me something that really, sort of stands through, stood through for me and still does. Mm. We, you know, when you lose somebody, it's like your ship goes under. Mm. And uh, it's just a terrible storm and you're grabbing onto whatever you can so you keep yourself afloat. Mm. As soon as you've gathered a few things, another wave comes down and just crashes and just, everything's just gone again. Mm. And you keep reaching and you keep reaching. And so there's less and less for you to, excuse me, less and less for you to hold on to. Mm. And you just don't have, you know, it's just it's mm. overwhelming all the time. And it goes on for so long that you, one, you know what to expect when the waves hit. Mm. Um, also, you can sometimes see them coming. Okay. So you can brace yourself. And um, that's basically what you do until the waves start to get further and further apart. Mm. And they're still not great and they still pull you down. Like um, mm. There were times when I'd get taken back to, like all the way back to uh, the emotion of that day. Mm. Um, but you manage it differently. Okay. You know? Again, it's just, it, it just becomes part of who you are and it's influenced me a lot. Okay. Uh, moving forward and like I said, that's why I try and do, uh, have good relationships. That's why I try and um, really make sure the people that 
but in my life, know that they are valued. Um, I treat them with respect, I'm mm. candid and, you know, honest mm. about it. You know, I've, I've, uh, I was pretty emotionally muted um, before then. Like, I struggled to talk about anything mm. personal and all that. And I've come, like, I wouldn't even recognize myself now. Sure. And that was a massive change. You know, I, I used to be this. You know, on the surface, you know, fine and everything, like mm. you knew me at work. And, mm. But I was, in fact, this very cold uh, individual. And like, I think about going back to that. You mm. know, I still think also after, after losing her, you know, it would be nice to not feel again. and. Mm. all that but you know it's not real going back there's no benefit yeah the um that was a place or part of your life that you were like that then but you've obviously evolved now yeah it's a, it, and it took a lot mm. um you have this very deliberate walk mm. um i had to be on my guard and be vigilant like every day mm. um like uh, when I used to get angry, I used to get very angry. Mm. And um, anger is a very uh, misleading emotion because it wants you to let it out. Mm. And it tells you, you know, the only way that you can yeah. satisfy me is by letting me out. Oh. Um, and to realize that that's not true and also seeing it coming from a distance and, you know, doing something to kind of set myself up and then, yeah. you know, so I could just let it pass, wash over me or what have you. But, mm. um, and like every day was difficult. I didn't know what to expect and, it, you know, just uh, make sure you get through the day yeah. um, uh, the right way. Mm. And woke up one day, and it wasn't that difficult anymore. Mm. I didn't feel like I'd always have to be thinking about it and, and you know, watching what I say, watching what I do all the time. Mm. And, um, but even now, like, you know, I say I'm a person trying, I have to always be mindful of it. Yeah. And um, I don't think it will take me over mm. that, you know, among other things, you know, that I that I had uh, to struggle with. Mm. Um, but, you know, I never just take for granted that it won't happen again. Mm. And, yeah, okay. that's, that, that's, that's been a long time, it took a long time. Yeah. I think the lessons, well, not the lessons, well, things that my friends have to, to, told me about their morning journey, mm -hmm. Um, like I have friends that have lost their parents um, or that have lost a loved one. I, I just think of Fatima or Gian, they yeah. lost their moms. Um, Fatima lost their dad. Um, another friend, Colleen, she lost her mom just recently. And um, and other friends. And, and the one thing that is always the message that I'm always hearing is that you don't, you don't get used to it, but you yeah. sort of learn to live with it the, the grief doesn't go away but you sort of learn to live with that and um and it's something that I've always been afraid of um and you are one of two friends that I have that have lost a partner um and my, myself and Arusha were talking about it on Saturday and she was sharing um some um some insight into her journey and I I always listen to it because it's Everybody's going through something. Yeah. Um, life is lifing. I've been saying life is is really just slapping us like, like yeah, like left, right, and center with different mm -hmm. obstacles. Um, but there's somebody out there that needed to hear what you just shared. Um, it might not be exactly the same, but it is. You've you you still here. You're still mm -hmm. trying, um, and you. Or 
trying to be better and trying to be different. Um, and I think that's that's important. And I think that's 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 cool. Um, yeah. I don't know what the, the cool kids say, if we're cool or whatever. Um, but I think that's that is good. Um, I always try to see the the glass half full um, and not taking away from anything that you're going through or been through. Um, but yeah, I think that is something that I admire about you. Yeah. I think it teaches you a lot. And it's like you say, everyone's going through something and that's why I've never quantified pain. Mm. So I'm not saying, oh, my thing is harder than yours. It's just mm. everybody's got something. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the best things that I could have done was go back to the office. Mm. Because um, I worked with colleagues who had also been through mm. losses. Um, one who lost their mother, um, another who lost his son. Mm. And you know, people that I could see that are still taking strides. Mm. And uh, that out a lot. Yeah. And without that, it might have been more difficult. Mm. So, yeah, but I mean, you need to move forward. Yeah. There's, there's no way you can't go back mm. as much as we'd like to. Uh, and that's, that's it. I mean, there's so much still to live for. Yeah. Things. To do. There's Luke. <laughs> yeah. And there's Ronald. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you for sharing that. Mm. I know it's not easy and it's it's something that... Yeah, it's, 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 it's not the easy topic just to touch on. I know we can sit here and talk for a really long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do a series. We, we're yeah. doing this as part one. Um, but just in terms of, so you left the nine to five, corporate gigs, um, and now you're running your own tattoo. It's not a parlor. It's... I'm running myself. <laughs> I, I am. Like when you say the owner of Black Cross, I'm like, I am. The business yeah so, you are the, the the black cross tattoos yeah that's okay. the thing um look when i left um, the office like when i made that decision it was not easy mm. i don't think it, it's like okay. looking looking back it's like it should have been easy but mm. you know you you don't know what you don't know yeah and um yeah so i got uh, i was tattooing for a year and a half, mm. like on the few days that I had available, mm. uh, maybe two a month. And first the freebies and first my, myself and <laughs> all that. Who tattoos himself, guys? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> this guy. Um, <laughs> so I did that and um, I already started my Instagram page with the name. Mm. Excuse me. Um, named after uh, uh, rather in memory of my wife mm. uh, because her first tattoo was a uh, black cross okay. on a you know, back of her neck with wow. stuff flying and you know so that's the significance for us um, so it was my art page because I was drawing mm. and I was only drawing because of my girlfriend who got me my first pencil set before I was just you know drawing as a delinquent <laughs> up. Um, so I did that did a couple of drawings also didn't have much time I did about 60 over a year and a half sure um, they encouraged me to approach studios with my portfolio mm. I was like no <laughs> no thanks <laughs> never gonna happen because uh. I'd always had an interest in tattooing and tattoos and stuff but I mean it was I always say there's pipe dreams and then there's that. Mm. And um, I approached the studio and they agreed to have me apprentice there. I happened to be on leave for two weeks and spent some time drawing there, three boys of time. Sure. <laughs> two work, weeks. It didn't work out. Okay. Um, and uh, I just kept drawing. I contacted other studios and it just wasn't happening. Mm. Uh, it's yeah, difficult to get into the industry. There's mm. a lot of uh, gatekeeping, you know, from yeah, all over. It's okay. sort of rife with that. Mm. And yeah, so I just kept growing. I was busy getting this 
then really? when um, one of the artists that were present that day just said, you know, it's after I bought my equipment. Mm. Um, so AJ says to me, you know, don't wait for permission, just do it. And I don't think that I'd have gone ahead and tattooed my leg at all. <laughs> Maybe sure. uh, if it wasn't for him saying that, because mm. I just, you know, you create this whole uh, image around, you know, this is huge. You know, mm. I, I, my hands were shaking. I remember that really clearly. And uh, did that. Not from the pain. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, being okay, mm. that really well. it wasn't great, but yeah. Okay. Um, you wouldn't admit it, would you, if you were in pain? I'm not. I mean, I okay. remember out of my sleeve. I don't like <laughs> anything. Okay, cool. So, did that one, did another one, um, and, and it was after I'd done four, when I thought, okay, fine, I need to get to somebody else mm. for a change. Um, and uh, my girlfriend was keen to be the first one and we did that and it turned out way better than it should have um, it still looks really good i must say mm. uh, relieved that that's the that that's the case because you know still now i tell her like why would you let <laughs> someone's only done for that to tattoo you that's love that's love yeah, she's been <laughs> massive uh, supporting awesome uh, force in my life Okay. And you know, after that, tattooing greens and um, again, I was being tattooed uh, in two instances and both artists at prominent studios were like, you know, why aren't you charging for your work? Mm. And I said, oh, what the <laughs> what <I'm> doing? <laughs> you know? I'm just playing here. I'm just playing here. <laughs> fast and loose and all that. And, um, you know, I started doing that and sort of worked out. Okay. Yes, and that went on for about a year and a half as well. Mm. I liked the drawing again. I didn't have much time. So in that year and a half, I did 30, 34 tattoos. Okay. And uh, saw that a new studio was looking for somebody. Mm. I sent my uh, portfolio and I got the position. Wow. Well, I, was offered okay. the, I was offered the position. And, you know, I'm working, you know. Pension, I've got medical aid, uh, getting a salary, and all it's like all those things. Yeah, there's a lot to consider, and I mm. took the dive because I thought, you know, if not now, then when? when? Yeah. And um, uh, that offer got me out the door, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, although the shop life uh, didn't work out, mm -hmm. um, ended on a bad note, I was really disappointed. Mm. You know, things went and it's been a little while now, I think, but two or three months where I've just been operating on my own. Okay. And again, that's scary, but I've got more security now than I did sitting at a desk because yep. I am the company, you know, yeah. <laughs> on paper, there's, there's so little risk now. <laughs> But, I am the backup plan. <laughs> yeah. Plan B is mm. plan A should work. Yeah. Um, so it's been interesting. I, I mean, I make my own rules. I, mm. I work with whoever I want to work with. Mm. I, if I don't want to work with somebody, I don't. Um, it's an admission deserved. And I, I feel like that's the way that everything should be. Every, mm. every job should be. Yes. You know, you should be able to say, you know, you don't want to work with this person. You don't yeah. want to work with that person. Um, I, I wish recently, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I recently said to a friend of mine who's still with the company, and I was like, it's such an unnatural way to be. Mm. Um, I take personal days whenever I want to, mm. I, uh, but I'm but I'm also out there working. I try and keep busy on my pages. Mm. Um, I try and engage with as many of my followers mm. as I as I can. Um, I like to think of my. Uh, following as a community um, so while I've got the time and mm. you know the capacity to speak to people and get to know people that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm gonna do because you know there's 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 no 
like cross without um, you know clients yeah. and people support and yeah so yeah. that's so cool that's basically it. so so just two things mm -hmm. i you, you touched on scary and there's there's a meme that i saw that that not a meme it, it was uh, on pinterest i saw this um this saying it says if it's the scariest um decision go with that one because then you know you're making the right decision because it's you don't know if you don't need to know all the details you're kind of working things out as you go mm -hmm. along right but i think that that's what makes it more exciting and, and makes your decisions more interesting than to just go with the safe and you know safe decision mm -hmm. look that was me my whole life mm -hmm. doing the you know doing what was expected and i think um at least from my generation, it was, you know, you finish school and you work. Mm. Yeah. And I joined the big company. And, mm. Same WhatsApp yeah, group. Yes, <laughs> stay there till you die. Yeah. And uh, it was a huge leap of faith. It was, mm. it was not an easy decision to make. But when I looked at the potential for longevity, the potential for uh, earning Mm. And all that, and there was just no looking back. Cool. I just want to acknowledge um, Denise Davis that's, that's in the chat group. She is somebody that I grew up in front of, and I just want to say hi, Denise. Um, thank you for joining us. I know it's Nisi, um, so she's always following following me. So thank you for, for joining. Um, and then I, I was at a workshop, um, a masterclass on mm. Friday, and this content educator was saying you have your followers right on on instagram and tiktok and um sometimes we just think that these people are there but we don't realize if they were actually all the people were in a room like uh -huh. imagine your all your followers were in a room like my 212 followers that i have if you y'all were sitting in front of me right now that would be a pretty big room um but we take it for granted so um yeah, I just I just thought that was quite interesting to think about it that way and to just think of people as oh, yeah. your followers, your subscribers, or your friends on Facebook or whatever. They're your community. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I try and acknowledge people. I'm out there liking posts mm. and um, uh, sending, uh, what's his name? Um, so Likes. The, the, what's the emoji? The reactions. The actions, on, on yeah. stuff. And, okay. Uh, at school, mm. um, you, know, you need to uh, show people that they're valued, I yeah. mean, even if it's just uh, someone following. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be a client. Um, uh, again, I'm especially grateful for for my clients. Mm. Uh, there's something I came across recently that rang through for me, and they say, you know, you'll have more clients become friends, become good friends, then you'll have friends become clients. That's true. And that's been a great experience. Yeah. Uh, my circle is growing and it's, mm. you know, like-minded people. It's interesting. It's mm. worky types. And um, it's been a very, it's, it's been an unexpected sort of uh, yeah. part of what I do. Okay. Uh, like, you know, you spend six hours with somebody mm. and, you know, you have a single serving best friend, sure. you know, <laughs> for the day. Uh, so you cover a lot of topics. Uh -huh. And, you know, I don't take that lightly because, mm. you know, I find out a lot about people, mm. like when I work with them. Mm. That's interesting. Sure. Where can people find you? I think we, we are 43 minutes, almost 44 okay. minutes into this. Yeah, time but has flown. For the moment, I'm at Cindy's house. <laughs> Um, I'm on all my main platform is uh, Instagram, so it's just at my black cross. Um, the same to find me on TikTok, mm -hmm. and you can search for the same on Facebook, I think. Mm -hmm. So just black cross tattoos on uh, okay. black cross tattoos on uh, on Facebook. Facebook. Um, but yeah, I reply to messages, I do private studio and call outs. So if you haven't been tattooed, I don't know, mm. why not? 
So, do, you, do you do tend to parties? I've been approached for one, actually, a client of mine suggested one. Okay. Um, so that is something I haven't done yet, but mm. I am keen on, on uh, giving it a go. Um, so we had to be like, so bad the party a little bit yeah. <laughs> sacrifices but um yeah. it is something that i'm that i've yet to try but i mean okay. anything goes i'm pretty chill in terms of what i take on okay um i predominantly lean towards um illustrative realism mm -hmm. uh black and gray but it's like if the price is right you know, <laughs> like, we'll do it i do other stuff Okay, so my tradition is for my birthday, um, every year I've been trying to get a, a tattoo. Yeah, so my birthday every year. Yeah, and my <laughs> birthday's coming up. So I am, I'm booking, um, we're going to talk about dates when hey. you're available. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you for Same. sharing this time. 45 minutes with me. Oh, 45. Yes. I'm a talker. Uh, yeah, he's a talker. <laughs> But I, I enjoy this 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 chat. I enjoy learning more about where, what you've been through mm -hmm. and also seeing you grow and yeah. And chicken and, and rice, is that still happening? No, I give it up. I'm, I'm recovering uh, chicken and rice eater. No, recovering gym bro. Okay. Um yeah, let's change. I don't have the time. I don't put the same emphasis on it okay. that I used to. It's just um It'll probably happen again sometime next mm -hmm. year, but you know, okay. You know, it's the meat suit. I mean, I need to. I'll put it on back on. So. Okay. Don't forget league day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gabby says tattoo tour. Huh? Mm. Tattoo tour. Hmm. I'm gonna need a link to what that means. <laughs> okay. We'll 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 chat later, Gabs, and see what that means. Um. Yeah, I haven't done a tattoo tour before, but yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Thank Leave you. us a comment if you are not watching this right now. We want to see all the tats. Oh. Show me yours. <laughs> and I'll show you mine. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe some of the arms. Um, so it's just that one. It's that that we've got. Uh, that one. And Which ones have you done yourself? Of those. Oh, where do we start? Um, that when he uh, done this, yes, that initial that little one, okay, and my logo, and, and that's why you would, uh, would be able to reach <laughs> also, yeah, it's just back ended. So, <laughs> ah, so there's that, okay. so done a couple and uh, got a bunch on my legs, okay. So, there's that. I don't want to know where else, I don't want to know where else. <laughs> Fortunately. Oh, my word. Denise says, can't say that I'm going to have a tattoo anytime soon, but wishing you all the best, Eugene. Nisi, why Thank not? You. Why Thank not? You. YOLO, you only live once. Come, let's, let's, let's do this together for my birthday. Gary says, it's really cool. And Chantal says, Psst, Cindy, tattoo voucher for BBC, lucky draw. Ooh. Jeez, I've, I know what the BBC is. You know what BBC is? The Business Breakfast Club? <laughs> okay, well, I'll I'll try to I'll try to hook us up, okay? Um, and we need to get him actually at BBC Chantal so that he can. We don't have a tattoo artist part of our network group, so BBC is ac actually our network group, and um, yeah, there's some amazing entrepreneurs that are there, and on a tattoo artist will just add some flavor. What do you think? <laughs> what do you say? You're free on the 26th. Um, bring them now. I think it it will be awesome. Okay, I'll get up with it. Okay, cool. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.